I welcome back a miraculous recovery. This is our health lead today. A 16 year old boy is alive after being infected by brain eating amoeba. The parasite is so deadly that it leads to a 97% fatality rate. Doctors today identified Sebastian de Leon as the fourth known survivor in the United States ever. The teenager was vacationing with his family in Florida when he was infected. Now doctors say they're optimistic about his recovery. We woke him up and we decided to take the breathing tube out. And within hours, he spoke. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Sorry, he's walking, he's speaking. I saw him this morning. He's ready to go home. I don't know if I wanted to leave yet, but he's ready to go home. All right, here are some facts. The amoeba lives in warm, freshwater lakes and rivers. It flourishes in places like Florida, so much so that if you were to scoop out a handful of water in a lot of places there, you would likely have grabbed up some of the brain-eating amoeba also. But actual infections are rare, with only about eight cases a year. Until now, the only other to survive in the U.S., a case in 1978, two children who survived in 2013. Kaylee Hardig was one of those survivors. She was 12 when the amoeba infected her brain after swimming in contaminated water at an Arkansas theme park. That year, an eight-year-old boy also survived, but he suffered permanent brain damage. And then there's the case this year. For more now on how this young man survived, I'm joined by Dr. Corey Aber. He's a professor at Louisiana State University, also Tulane. First off, Dr. Eber, uh, thanks so much for being with us. Thank when you, you hear brain-eating amoeba, when you hear about these deadly infections, how, how do you know if you have one? Well, I tell you what, it does uh, make you feel very scared, like if you go swimming in the lake, you're going to get this. But you have a bigger chance of getting hit by a car and dying from that accident than getting this. I mean, it's just like a, a, a general infection that you might feel like if you had the flu. You would get a headache. You'd get vomiting, some diarrhea, some neck stiffness. That's one of your first major things that you would feel if you're going to have this uh, particular uh, amoeba. And also, you start getting a seizure, coma, all these types of things that would lead you to think that if I was swimming in a lake very uh, recently, then I need to get checked out immediately because it, it's a very obviously fatal illness. So 97% fatality rate, Dr. Aber. Sure. And in fact, three other people who caught it this year, they died. So why then did this boy survive? Well, you know, uh, it, it had to be a perfect or imperfect storm, however you want to think about it, because a lot of people get exposed to this. I mean, the CDC did a study in 2009 that actually showed that a lot of people have antibodies to this because they get exposed to it a lot. But everybody's antibody responds to different types of uh, organisms, viruses, and bacteria a little bit different. So the thing that probably saved him is the amount of that amoeba that got into his nose, that got into his brain, had to be relatively small, and his antibody titers had to be relatively high for him to actually survive. But some of those things can still even be variable and you still wouldn't survive. So he's just a very lucky young man. So a lot of us have antibodies because, you know, it's alarming when you find out that this amoeba is in, in the water and quite often you're just swimming in it and you don't even know. Exactly, and, that, and that's the reality. And we find that this affects mostly teenage boys. Why? Because teenage boys are a little bit reckless. So what do they do? They are in high-impact water sports, which means when you hit the water, that water is forced up your nose. So anything that you would have that would force water up your nose puts you at risk. That's anything from hot springs or diving in water or any type of water sport or even actually using one of those sinus rinse bottles if the water has not been sterilized. We had a couple of cases from one of those uh, from those sinus rinse hmm. bottles. So those aren't bad things to use. We just need to make sure that the water is sterile before you use it. So aside from not swimming or using one of those sinus bottles, what can you do to, to prevent infection? You know, I would uh, tell people, really, you know, you kind of look a little bit, you know, odd if you use a nose clip when you're swimming in a lake. But if you're not going to use a nose clip, you really should avoid going under the water at any point it, with high pressure. And that's the only thing you can do. But you got to remember, this is very rare. But in medicine, we talk about things that are odds. So, you know, if it's a million to one odds, but that one person is you, it's 100% in your house. So I just tell people, try to avoid that at all uh, at all costs, just going underneath that water because that, that amoeba gets into your nose, up your olfactory nerve, into your brain, and it eats away at your brain. I know that sounds really awful, yeah. but that's actually what happens. Dr. Corey Abear, thanks so much for your insight. Really appreciate it, doctor.